मोनी एचओडी प्रोफेसर एके चतुर्वेदी सर माय सेमिनार गाइड शांतिलाल मीना सर सेमिनार कोऑर्डिनेटर डीपी शर्मा सर फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एग्जामिनर्स एंड वर्क आई एम ओके सोनी प्रसून मार बैचलर ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग राजस्थान टेक्निकल यूनिवर्सिटी कोटा राजस्थान टुडे आई एम प्लीज टू बी हियर इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू ऑल टू डिलीवर माय प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ सेमिनार टॉपिक सोलर डिस्टिलेशन न्यू ट्रेंड्स इन डेवलपमेंट्स सो दिस इज एन ओवरव्यू व्हाट आई विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग यू इन दिस टॉपिक सो फर्स्ट व्हाट इज सोलर डिस्टिलेशन सोलर वाटर डिस्टिलेशन इज अ प्रोसेस ऑफ यूजिंग एनर्जी फ्रॉम द सनलाइट टू सेपरेट फ्रेश वाटर फ्रॉम सॉल्ट्स और अदर कंटेनेंट्स The unheated water absorbs heat slowly, reaching high temperatures. The heat causes the water to evaporate, cool, and condense into vapor, leaving the contaminants behind. Solar steels are used for this purpose. Solar steels can be used for low capacity and self-reliant water supply systems. Now, come to solar distillation techniques. As you know, nature is carrying out the process of water distillation since ages, and water is the most needed substance on the earth for sustenance of life. But due to rapid expansion of population, accelerated industrial growth, and enhanced agriculture production, there is ever increasing demand for fresh water. So there are many techniques established for conversion of sea and saline water into potable water, which is used for human consumption and their agriculture and industrial purpose. Potable water should not contain dissolved salts more than 550. Now come to the classification of solar distillation is shown in the diagram. Solar distillation is classified into two categories. The first one is passive distillation, and the other one is active distillation, which further divided into several categories. There are some other methods for conversion brackish water into potable water. So the first is distillation. Saline water is evaporated using thermal energy, and resulting steam is collected and condensed as a final product. And the second one is vapor compression. In vapor compression, air water vapor from boiling water is compressed adiabatically, and vapor gets superheated. The superheated vapor is first cooled at to saturation temperature and then condensed at constant pressure. This process is driven by the mechanical energy. And the third one is reverse osmosis. Here, saline water is pushed at high pressure through special membranes, allowing their molecules to pass rapidly and not get dissolved salts. And the last one is electrodialysis. Air pair of special membrane perpendicular to which there is an electrical field are used, and water is passed through them. Water does not pass through the membranes by dissolved salts passed rapidly. So what differences we can see here? So in distillation, thermal energy is used while in vapor compression, reverse osmosis, electric dialysis, etc. Some mechanical and electric energies. Now we discussed in, as we discussed in previous slides about distillation. And for distillation, solar steels are used. Now, question is, what are solar steels? So, a solar steel is a green energy product that uses the natural energy of the sun to purify the water. The solar steel process uses sun instead of other sources such as fossil fuels to gain the energy needed for purification. There are many types of solar steels that you can see in the slide. Single impact basin solar steel, type tilted tray solar steel multi basin step solar steel regeneration inclined step solar steel big type solar steel multiple effect diffusion solar steel chimney type solar steel multi tray multiple effect solar steel double basin solar steel humidification dehumidification distiller multi stage flash distiller and solar assisted pipe film multi stage flash distiller and this is symmetric diagram of basin type solar steel which describes the working of a solar steel And these are some components of single effect solar steel, like basin, black liner, transparent cover, condensate channel, sealant, and insulation and supply and delivery system. Now come to the some materials which we can use in solar steel's different parts. In glazing, we use glass or tilted plastic, or for liner materials, use are asphalt, mat, black butyl rubber, black polyethylene. In sealant, we use wood, tin, tar, stab, silicon, sealant, and for basin tray, we use wood, galvanized iron, steel, aluminium, asbestos, cement, bricks, and concrete, etc. And mainly plastic materials and concrete are used for condensate chain. Now we will discuss about the requirements of a good solar steel. Why a good steel is required? A good steel is needed so that it is easily assembled in the field. be constructed with locally available materials and be lightweight for ease of handling and transportation have an effective life of 10 to 
20 years, no requirement of an external power sources can also serve as a rainfall catchment surface. And apart from it, he is able to withstand prevailing winds. Materials used should not contaminate the distillate, meet standards, civil and structural engineering standards, and should be low in portion. Come towards dependency of output of solar steel on various parameters. So, these are some parameters which are responsible for output of a steel. The first one is climatic parameters in which solar radiation, ambient temperature, wind speed, outside humidity, sky conditions are changed. Another one is design parameter. These are some design parameters single slope or double slope, glazing material, water depth in basin, bottom insulation, orientation of steel, inclination of glazing, spacing between water and glazing, type of solar steel that you use. And the third one is operational parameters. And in operational parameters, preheating of water, coloring of water, salinity of water, rate of early growth, input water supply arrangement are there. So these are some diagrams. This one is for energy transfer in a single liter basin solar steel. You can see the energy transfer in this diagram. And this one for major heat fluxes of a solar steel. After all discussion, we talk about main problems of a solar steel. Sometimes we face the problem low distillate output per unit area, leakage of vapor through joints, and high maintenance. And post output per unit is very high are common problems. So, we can get the conclusion from all the discuss we did in earlier slide. We can say solar steel output is a strong function of a solar radiation on a horizontal surface. The distillate output increases linearly with the solar insulation for a given ambient temperature and depth of water in the basin also affects the performance considerably. At lower basin depths, the thermal capacity will be lower and hence the increase in the water temperature will be large, resulting in higher output. However, it all depends on the insulation of the steel. If there is no insulation, increase in water temperature will also increase the water vapors. These are references of my presentation as mentioned in the slide. Okay, I have completed my topic. If anybody having any query or doubt can ask now, I will be happy to answer. Yes. What is the major issue with solar distillation? Solar distillation is suitable for remote, arid and semi-arid areas where drinking water shortage is a major problem and solar radiation is high. The drawbacks to using solar energy for distillation are the high initial cost and the intermittent nature of the sun. Any other query? Yes. What is the advantage of solar, solar distillation over the other forms of water purification? So it uses natural and free renewable energy from the sun to purify the water. Water gotten from the solar water distillation process is less corrosive than what you had get from a tap. It is free from chemicals like chlorine or other materials that are existent in the water due to the use of water purifying materials. So, any other question? No. So, I hope you all enjoyed the session. So, thank you.